There's a joke that graduate students tell, which is that 40 years of transportation economics at Harvard, maybe it's even 50 now, uh, can be boiled down to four words, bus good, train bad. Now, that is assuredly a caricature, but we'd have to admit there's a certain modicum of truth in this, which is both about skepticism about the often very over-the-top claims that are made about rail, and I think uh, true enthusiasm for the often underrated bus. Um, but let's start with the rail side. You're the author of The Dark Side of Light Rail, which took on the, the darling of the 1980s for, for this. And, and certainly you, like me, have sat at the foot of uh, John Meyer, who was uh, the father of transportation economics and whose book, The Urban Transportation Problem, started very much economists on the road of questioning, questioning rail. Tell us, about, tell us about rail. Tell us about why passenger rail isn't always a great fit for at least American cities. Well, one of the things to recognize is that passenger rail carries a fraction of the total public transport trips in, in American cities. Even in a city like Boston, the bus is 50% of all public transport trips, and commuter rail and light rail and heavy rail are 50%, are the other 50%. And if you think about um, other lower density cities, the, the public transport is provided entirely by the bus. And critics of the bus and proponents of the rail um, argue that Buses can never deliver the kind of quality of service that rail does, that people just prefer rail. And I think that's because what they have in mind is comparing buses operating in mixed traffic and streets with rail systems that are completely segregated uh, from traffic and, and thus can achieve higher speeds. And if you allow buses the same kind of privileges, uh, which is something called bus rapid transit, one of the most important innovations in, in uh, public transport in the last 30 or 40 years. But if you allow them to operate on a protected right of way with stops that are not really stops but more like stations where you can pay your fare in advance and there's high platform boarding that's fast and, and debarking that's fast. Um, when you compare those kinds of systems with rail systems, the quality of the bus service is at least as good if not, if not better. So. This is this for me is sort of one of the great aha moments of Meyer, Kane, and Wall that that this idea that there's really very little that you can do with a train that you can't do with a bus on in a tunnel or on a dedicated line. Where did that idea come from? Was it was it originally to them, or was it in the in the air for transportation economics before them? Well, I think there were two roots of it. One was we were building f expressway systems in in the United States, and some bus advocates developed the idea of the freeway flyer, express buses between the suburban uh, residential areas and, and the downtown. And those turn out to be about the only um, buses that, that showed a lot of growth in the, in mm -hmm. the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Were they so, dedicated lanes or no? They no, were, they were just... because the freeways were generally not that right. congested, so right. they weren't dedicated. And then for, in South America, um, the city of Curitiba invented this idea of bus rapid transit, essentially designing a bus system so that it mimicked the service characteristics of, of a train. And that idea was um, ignored, I think, for a while. John Kane and John Meyer were, were attuned to it until Bogota the developed the transmillennial system, yeah. Right. So where did Curitiba get the idea? Did it, all, did it come from a, an inspired mayor there? Yes. Where, where is it? A mayor whose, whose name I forget, Jaime Lerner, I think. Jaime Lerner. Um, who was by training an architect mm -hmm. uh, and who who did a bunch of wonderful things with his city, made a park system and, and, and in addition to developing this new transport system. But it really took off in developing countries, BRT, bus rapid transit, so that now there there's some 100, 120 cities that have BRT systems uh, in developing countries. And we have a BRT system in, in Boston, the Silver Line, and they have mm -hmm. a BRT-like services in, in New York and Los Angeles. Although the complaints that the Silver Line is misleadingly uh, presented as a, as a rail alternative are, are rife in our city, right? I mean, it's, it's, the users are frequently, you know, kvetching in some, in some way about it. But it's a great system, right? I mean, it, it, it's, what do the economics of this look like? What are, what are the sort of relative costs of, of BRT versus traditional heavy rail or light rail well, for passengers? Well, there's another myth about buses, uh, which is the uh, 
the myth that they cost more to operate than rail systems. And, and the idea that people have in mind is that there's a bus, a 40-foot bus, uh, with one driver per 50 or 60 passengers max. Whereas with a rail system, you could have a train of eight cars, each carrying 100 passengers, or, and so you'd have 800 passengers behind one, one driver. But the reality is that, that you have to spend a lot of labor in maintaining the track, the power distribution, the signal system, and, and the rest with, with rail. And if you're operating the buses on exclusive right-of-ways so that they can run rapidly, the productivity of the drivers, of the bus drivers, is increased. And, and you also, in many of these BRT systems, use articulated buses, long, right. long right. buses. So you're getting multiple compartments, multiple chambers for each driver. This would seem to be an ideal place for driverless vehicles as well, on a separated lane so there's less likelihood that anything bad will happen under complete regulation from the transit authority or whoever runs the buses. So, I mean, wouldn't this seem to be an area in which you could quite possibly get rid of the drivers altogether in some you know, future decade? Yes. Yeah. And, and for example, places like Singapore, which has a kind of unskilled labor shortage, are experimenting now with driverless buses well, or driver-assisted buses. Of course, that makes sense, right. Singapore, Singapore, being, Singapore a, being a pioneer the, that it is in many things, in, that's, in that's right. We'll, transportation. That's right. We'll get back to that in a second. But the relative, the case for rail is, is surely a function of the density of the environment, right? So what, what kind of density do you need to get rail to make economic sense? It depends very much on the geography. Mm -hmm. um, but I think one of the, an, another myth, bus myth, Right, is that buses don't have the capacity that are needed for, for dense corridors, and, and so you have to build rail. Um, but there are very few corridors in the, in the United States that carry more than 15,000 passengers per hour per day, uh, or per, per hour in the peak direction. Right. Um, that you could surely accommodate with. Oh, a BRT system can do 15,000 easily. And yeah. there's some lines of, in the Caracas line in Bogota is, is 40 or 45,000 passengers. Yeah, I've seen the Transmillennial in, in action. It's awesome, right? I mean, it is just, awesome. I mean, one of the other advantages of this, particularly in the developing world, is just the flexibility of buses relative to, to rail. With rail, you're stuck, and, you know, you're stuck for a century, right, as we know that the rail systems in New York and Boston and London have been, you know, uh, a straitjacket in many cases for the city for a very long period of time, whereas buses, you can change around, you can reuse the infrastructure if, if the development doesn't occur. And that would seem to be another asset. To well, and, and where you have a dispersed trip pattern, and you can have more point-to-point -point services because the vehicle is smaller. Right. I mean, what people say is a liability, a small vehicle behind one driver, is also an asset. And, and you don't have to um, have an enormous... Uh, volume to, of, of passengers on a route to justify a route. 